Okay, good afternoon everyone and thanks for joining us for this webinar today. Um, the webinar you've joined us for is an introduction to SunCat. My name is um, Vivian, I'm Open User Support Team at Adena and your presenter today is Zena Mulligan, a project officer um, on SunCat. And also with us is Natasha um, Edra Jones, who's another project officer um, on the SunCat project. So um, just before we get started, we'd really like to find out what brought you along um, to the webinar today. And so you should be able to see the results, and which are telling us that um, a, a big majority, 46%, um, have selected about the service, the content and scope. Um, but a fair um, selection of interest in the other responses as well. So thank you very much for doing that. So I'm going to hand you over to Zina now. We'll have a, a closer look at your responses later, and that will help us plan future webinars. Hi, thanks for that, Viv. Um, I'm just going to... Um, start off this afternoon with a, a brief introduction to what SunCat is, and including its scope and its content. I'll then move on to highlighting some of the key features of the service by showing you some screenshots of the interface, and also I'll run through a very short demo as well. I'll then speak about how SunCat can help both your end users and you as um, information professionals. And then I'll explain about contributing to SunCat if you don't already. And then I'll round off this afternoon with um, a, a brief overview of our upcoming plans for um, future developments of SunCat. And there should be plenty of time at the end for um, any questions you might have. Uh, but please do feel free to submit these via the, the webinar facility as we go along. So SunCat is the Serious Union Catalogue for the UK. And it is a free-to-use JISC service delivered by ADENA which is a JISC designated centre of expertise based at the University of Edinburgh. And at ADENA, we develop and deliver shared services and infrastructure for UK research and education. And SunCat is a union catalogue of the series bibliographic and holdings information of 100 UK research libraries. And our contributing libraries include uh, all the national libraries, including the British Library, the National Libraries of Scotland and Wales, and all the largest higher education institutions in the UK, including all the Russell Group universities. We also have a selection of specialist institutions, including the Royal Society of Medicine, the National Art Library, and the Institution of Engineering and Technology, among others. And including these uh, more specialist libraries means that we not only in increase the geographic coverage of SunCat across the UK, but we also increase the number of unique titles of the catalogue. These specialist collections are likely con to contain more unique material, not widely held in the UK. And by including these in SunCat, it makes these collections more visible and ultimately more accessible to researchers. And SunCat contains information at the serial's title level. So this includes information about both print and electronic journals, periodicals, newspapers, newsletters, um, conference proceedings, annual reports, and, and other publications of a continuing nature. It also um, includes links through to journals, tables of contents, and from there to the full text of articles as well. Asuncat is also a source of high-quality Mark 21 records, which our contributing libraries can freely download to update and upgrade their local catalogues, so that SunCat consists with resource discovery both at a national and at a local level. And as well as the um, holdings information of 100 UK research libraries, we also harvest uh, serious bibliographic records from the Directory of Open Access Journals, and we license bibliographic records from CONSER, which is a database of the Library of Congress's corporate online serials cataloging program, and this includes some very high quality bibliographic records, which are particularly useful for any library who want to download these to upgrade their local catalogues. And finally, we also license records from the ISSN, and these can be useful for general identification purposes. So all the records from all these different sources are stored in one database, and we do att attempt to uh, deduplicate these records to view, so that in theory, for each um, unique title in SunCat, there should really only be one bibliographic record displaying with all the library's holdings attached to that record. However, I'm afraid the reality is 
that due to the very varied quality of bibliographic information supplied by all these different sources, it isn't always possible to match records for the same title together. So I'm afraid a few duplicate records do exist. So this is the um, home page of the SunCat service um, and also the basic search page. As I mentioned, there is, it's a free to use service so there is no need to log in or register. You can use the links in the navigation bar along the top of the screen to navigate to other parts of the site to find um, introductory um, guides, videos and also FAQs and also information about contributing to the service and the free record downloading service. Um, you can get uh, straight in and get stuck into searching SunCat from here, but first of all I just wanted to highlight this map on the right hand side of the screen, which is a map of all our contributing library locations. Now for some institutions this just means one library for that institution, but for others, for example the University of Oxford, it can mean over 80 individual libraries. And I'd like to point out you'd have to zoom quite far out of this map to see all the locations in SunCat as thanks to the Natural Environment Research Council, we do have some locations in Antarctica. And finally, on this page, uh, we also have a feed from the SunCat blog, so you can easily keep up to date with the latest, our latest news as you're conducting your searches. So, uh, focusing on the um, basic search itself, uh, we have a range of uh, indexes to search on. Titled keywords is the default, but we also have an exact title and ISSN search, which could be useful if you know exactly what you're looking for. But we also then have a general keyword and subject heading search as well. When you start to type in your search terms, um, auto suggestions should appear. And also, if you, your search uh, happens to return zero results, you should receive alternative search suggestions. Um, however, if you want to carry out a more complex search or you prefer to browse through your journals, you can also select the advanced search or the browse option from here as well. However, sticking with the basic search screen for the minute, um, it's possible to limit your search to a particular geographic location or to a list of geographic locations of your choosing. Or you can limit your search to a particular holding institution or again to a selection of holding institutions of your selection. And you can also combine these limits together. So for example, you could choose to limit your search to just to the holdings of the University of Oxford plus all the libraries in the London area. And we hope to develop this functionality a little further by allowing users to set up and save their preferred library and location limits across searches. And we'd also like to set up um, a set of predefined um, library or institution limits um, or views under SunCat for um, groups of libraries, whether these are groups of libraries by subject or by geographic region or some sort of strategic consortia. As this would effectively provide mini union catalogues um, onto only their data. And so it could be useful for um, subject groupings such as the Arliss Art Libraries or geographic groups such as the M25 Libraries or even to a group such as the UK Research Reserve. And the first example uh, that we're going to have of this is um, for Salser, which is a union catalogue of Scottish libraries including Scottish higher education, further education, public and specialist research libraries. And later this year, we'll be providing a dedicated self-serve view from SunCat. So this is the um, search results screen on SunCat. And you can choose to how many records you want to display per page. And your results are automatically ranked by relevance. So you can choose to uh, view an alphabetical sorting um, by journal title by clicking on the title link or you can sort them chronologically by year first published. On this page we've included an alphabetical listing of each library holding and each title in the results list, so that if you're interested in holdings of a particular library, you can easily scroll through this list rather than having to go into each record to find that library. And on the left-hand side, we've, just, uh, we've introduced some post-search filters. 
to conserve your results to a particular holding institution or to um, electronic only holdings or to print only holdings or to particular subjects, authors, publishers, etc. And as you'd expect, these filters work cumulatively so that the more filters you add, um, the more you reduce down your result set and you can focus in on records likely to be of relevance to you. Clicking on the title and the results screen will take you into the full record display where you'll be presented with what we call the preferred or the best bibliographic record for that set. As I mentioned earlier, we do attempt to match records to the same title together and as part of this, the system uses an algorithm to automatically select the best bibliographic record for display. You can then use this record to check in detail such as the ISSN, the publisher and any changes of title. However, you can also always view the individual records supplied by each contributing library for the title by clicking on one of these links at the bottom of the bibliographic display. At the top of the bibliographic display, there's a table of contents button, and this links out to both the ZTalk and Journal Talks services. So you can view not only the most recently published articles, but also uh, you can expand your view back to older articles as well. And I think this is quite useful for Suncat as it not only helps to highlight new articles of interest, but it also helps to confirm if a previously unknown title is really likely to be of interest to a user. And also from the Journal Talks page, it's possible to try and connect through to the full text of articles via your, your local URL resolver. Scrolling further down the full record display, we're taken to an alphabetical listing of all the libraries holding that title. In addition to the library name, the shelf mark, and the summary holding statement, which is a vital piece of information which lets you check if a library holds the volumes and issues you require. We also include links out to library's local catalogues. This means that if you want to check on the most up-to-date status of a library's holdings, you can now do so very quickly and easily. And clicking on the library name on the left-hand side of the screen um, will open up a new page in Suncat with some additional and hopefully helpful information about that library. So on this page, you will get um, a link to the library's homepage, so you can check on details such as opening hours and access policies. However, on this page, you'll also see some general contact details for the library. And there's also a link to Google Map and directions for those interested in physically visiting the library. And for interlending staff, there's the British Library Code and the contact details for the local interlibrary lending department. And finally, in this page, we also have the date this library's data was last updated in SunCat to give you an idea of the currency of the data that you're looking at. So I mentioned earlier that we also have an advanced search option, and this allows you to create more complex searches. So if you want to exclude particular terms or you want to combine terms across different fields or indexes. It also gives you um, a greater in range of indexes to search on and some additional pre-search limits such as by language, year first published, and probably most significantly by format. So you can um, limit your search to electronic only holdings or to print only holdings, which could be useful for interlending purposes. And finally, uh, we also have um, a browse option. So you can browse alphabetically by title subject heading, author, and so on, and also numerically by ISSN. So I'm just going to leave the slides for um, one moment, and I'm going to run through a very quick demo of the service. So this is the, the home page, and um, as I mentioned, it's just a matter of typing in your um, search terms, and as you type them in, some also suggestions will appear. Just click on one of these to select it, and then click on the Find Now button. So this takes us to the search results screen, and you can scroll down that. The results are automatically ranked by relevance, and you have the uh, list of libraries holding that title there as well. On the left-hand side, we have the uh, post-search filters. 
to consult her to a particular holding institution or by format, subject, publisher, and so on. And we're just going to show and we're just going to show here how you can um, limit your search to a particular uh, format to print holdings only. Sorry, I'm just removing that <laughs> from the screen. Um, so you can, we're just showing here, that was showing um, how to limit your search or filter your search results to non-electronic holdings only. To um, view a title, just click on the title in the results list and you're taken into the full record display. And you can use this bibliographic details to check on um, things like the ISSM and any changes to the title. In the holdings display, you can see the library name, uh, shelf mark, summary holding statements and the links out to the local catalogues. Use the summary holding statement to check which library has the volumes you require. If you click on the library name, you're taken out to this information page about the library, and here we can see the British Library Code and contact details for their interlibrary loan department. And you can also click out on the map to Google Map and Directions. So you just um, type in your postcode to get your directions and find your way. So I'm just going to go back um, into the slides again. And we're going to move on to talking about um, how SunCat can help both your end users and you as information professionals. First of all, if we talk about end users, I'm really thinking about anyone here seeking um, information about serials held in the UK. And for them, SunCat is a free and easy to use service which can highlight journals in their subject area, um, enable them to link through to the journal tables of contents, and can also direct them to copies of the journals they require, to links to information on directions and access. And sticking um, with your end users, um, if you add SunCat as a target in your URL resolver, it means that if your users are unable to instantly access full text, and they, they're less likely to hit a dead end, as SunCat can provide them with information about where they can access the journal articles they require. And it can help them decide whether interlibrary loan is an option or which libraries they might want to physically visit in order to get a hold of the, the journal articles they require. Or finally, they may want to, to use the information um, to make a case to you to start subscribing to the journal by highlighting who else holds it. You could also add SunCat as a link in your local catalogue or discovery service. Um, again, this would help users uh, find about, uh, out about um, additional volumes or missing volumes or older or current volumes if you don't have the complete run of the journal title. And you could also think about adding links to SunCat on uh, your library pages related to discovery, or to journals, or to articles, or to catalogues, or to pages related to access, such as interlibrary loan, or document delivery, or visiting other libraries. Really anywhere where you want to help your users find out about and access material beyond your own institution's collections. And we've produced a leaflet um, with some suggestions on how you can integrate SunCat into your library website and services. And this is available on the help and support pages of the SunCat website. So now uh, I just want to talk about how um, SunCat can help you as information professionals. Um, it can help a wide range of library staff um, in a range of situations. So for those working directly with serials, SunCat can um, be used to check on the bibliographic details. And for those working directly with end users, we can use SunCat to um, help direct the user to locate uh, the, journal the journals they require, or to help them find out about the existence of journals in their subject area. 
And interlibrary loan librarians can also use SEMCAT to verify bibliographic details. And with one search, they can tell uh, where a journal, whether a journal is held in the British Library or in another one of the 100 contributing libraries in SEMCAT. And if their library contributes um, to uh, SEMCAT, the same search will also confirm they don't hold it locally. And the library limits and library and location limits um, can also be used to uh, limit the search to a particular geographic area or to a particular list of libraries, which could be useful if there's any reciprocal um, loan arrangements in place. Also, the new format limit means that it's possible to limit your search to um, print only holdings. Then, once um, you've identified libraries um, holding the title that you're looking for, you can use the summary holding statement to check that they hold the exact volumes and issues that are required. And again, once you find a library with these uh, correct volumes, you can use the library information page to check on the British Library Code and the contact details for the Interlibrary Loan Department. And collection managers can use SUNCAT to uh, determine information about their serials collection. For example, the number of unique titles they hold or the overlap um, with other libraries of SUNCAT. And this could be useful on a geographic or subject level basis. And it's possible uh, to choose to compare holdings against all 100 libraries in SUNCAT or again just to choose to compare against a particular geographic um, area or to a particular list of libraries of your selection. And again, it's possible not only to see who else holds the titles, but again to check the information right down to volume and issue level. And catalogers from anywhere can consult MARC records in SUNCAT, and this includes the high quality CONSER records. And as I mentioned, catalogers from contributing libraries can freely download <laughs> records directly into the local catalog to update um, and upgrade uh, existing records or to add records for new subscriptions. <clears throat> so as well as using SUNCAT interface, you may be interested in contributing to SUNCAT. And um, one of the most common suggestions we receive for improving the interface is that we add more contributing libraries. And we do indeed intend to keep um, expanding the coverage of the, of the service. We currently have 100 uh, contributing libraries and we're keen to add more higher education libraries and public libraries. And to increase the number of unique titles in SUNCAT, we'd like to add more specialist libraries. And where we can, we would be keen to improve the geographic coverage. So we're, all, we're always keen to hear from any library interested in contributing. And now that we've got the um, library limiting functionality, we're also here to keep keen to hear from any groups of libraries who might benefit from having their own mini union catalogue of their own serials data. And contributing to SUNCAT is a pretty simple process. It really just involves completing a questionnaire about your serials data and then sending us a file of your serials records and then sending us regular update files to make sure that the information in SUNCAT is kept as up to date as possible. And benefits of um, contributing include increasing the exposure of your collections at a national level and enabling your colleagues and users to search your collections alongside those of 100 other libraries in SUNCAT. There's also the free um, download service which allows you to download Mark 21 records directly into your local catalogue and finally you can put, compare your journal collections against those of nearly of around 100 other libraries. So I'm just going to uh, round off this afternoon uh, by talking a little about our upcoming development plans. Uh, the first thing I've got here isn't, isn't really a development plan, it's really business as usual. I've already mentioned that we do indeed intend to keep adding more libraries to SUNCAT and you'll see uh, more libraries starting to appear as we go through this year. I've also already mentioned the development of customised views onto the catalogue and that Seltzer will be the first example of this. However, so I just want to talk now about a development we're currently working on to provide um, a journal's holdings uh, comparison service. Now, I already talked um, a little bit earlier about how you could use SUNCAT to compare um, 
you're holding for a title against um, 100 libraries in SunCat, in most cases right down to the, the volume and issue level. However, it's really only possible to do this on a title, individual title by title basis. So it's really only feasible if you've got a small number of titles. So we're going to be introducing an interface which would allow you to um, upload a large batch of titles for comparison purposes. So this might be um, of interest if you want to find out about um, your subject strengths in particular areas as compared to other libraries. Or um, it may be useful um, if you're thinking of disposing of some low-use material. Or again, if you're thinking about cancelling or renewing subscriptions. So, for example, um, if you find some journals uh, that you have, you, you hold them are quite uniquely held, not widely held across 100 libraries, you may want to make sure you hold on to these or even move them into more secure storage. However, if they are widely held, you may feel happy to dispose of them. Or if you're thinking of cancelling some subscriptions, you may want to check that your users would still have access to them locally or via interlibrary loan. And this development will be based on work that we are currently carrying out for the UK Research Reserve, where we run an automatic scarcity checking service uh, for the journal titles submitted by their member libraries. And finally, we're also going to um, look at introducing some personalization features in SunCat, um, allowing users to save searches across sessions and also to save the preferred limits and the preferred number of records they display on the results screen. So um, I'm just going to run a quick poll now, um, or if there is, um, just to find out um, who would be interested in uh, using or at least hearing a bit more about a serials holdings comparison service. So there's just three options, either yes, no, or you don't know at this point. So uh, just to round off, um, just to let you know, you can find more information on the SunCap website about um, either contributing to the service or um, also about the record downloading service as well. And there's also FAQs, um, introductory guides and an introductory video as well. And I encourage you to have a look at the blog and uh, to follow us on Twitter. And uh, we're going to just finish off uh, with a final poll today about giving us some feedback about today's session and also whether you would be interested in attending a couple of uh, more uh, specific SunCat sessions. One focusing more on the meta data and cataloging side and using SunCat and the other um, again on uh, serials management collection. So I'm just going to hand over to you now and um, feel free to ask any questions you would like via the webinar facility. Um, Viv will probably read the questions out and then I'll attempt or, or Natasha will attempt to answer them as well. Um, we're particularly keen to hear about um, if there's anything additional you like added to SunCat or if there's anything you don't like about the new service. Um, also, if you've got any suggestions um, for new contributing libraries or groups of libraries who benefit from um, a, a mini new catalogue. Or again, if you're interested in using the Serials Holdings Comparison Service. But really, feel free to ask anything at all. Thanks. There's a question. Um, Manzina, where are the technical details about what is needed to contribute to the catalogue? OK, they are on the website. And I'm just going to hand over to Natasha, hopefully, to uh, give you a little bit more detail on that. I think um, regarding the standards, I think you're the area there's a section on four libra librarians on the, the web page. There is a section on the SunCat bibliographic standards and there's a link through to the PDF. We have two standards. We have an entry standard which basically says please give us your data and we would like a title, a local control number and some holdings. That's it. And our upgrading standard is what we would like you to maybe upgrade your records if you could possibly do so, which is based on the CONSER minimum standard. Okay, there's a second question. Are SunCat staff involved in updating records if they see inaccuracies? Okay, actually this is um, <laughs> probably <laughs> another question for Tasha, because Tasha is very much on the bibliographic and metadata side here. I mean, I think I can say that, you know, they're, they're not really, but you may want to give more detail on that. But what we do try to do is notify our contributing libraries of um, any 
um, bad errors that they might have, like a record, uh, like any records without titles or holdings. And so we send these when they're sent to us. We send them back saying these are um, these really need to haven't met our entry requirements, which are also on the Suncat website. And um, it would be lovely if you could upgrade them but we're not expecting anybody to actually do that because we know how the full-time librarians actually have. <laughs> okay, so, um, another question. Um, would it be possible to add subject RSS feeds to some help? Oh, um, probably, yes. That's something we could think about. It's just it, it hasn't come up before, but that's that, that could be... Um, that could be quite useful, so I'm guessing that really involves someone creating a subject search and then getting updates via RSS feed. So, uh, yeah, we will we'll certainly consider that one. Thank you. Okay, and then um, Martin from Liverpool is saying, we only contribute print holdings. I didn't realize you also did electronic. Do you want me to explore sending this data from our institution? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. And um, another question. Lots of questions coming in now. How do records get into the catalogue? By FTP or harvesting or how? And what is the underlying system? Is it a library system? If so, which? Well, um, yes, uh, the system underlying managing the data at the minute is, is Alice. And yes, we normally ask um, our contributing libraries to FTP a file of the serials over. But this file can take, uh, you know, it can be um, marked communications format or we also accept command delimited. To be honest, we accept, uh, if you can send it to us, we'll work it out, basically, after that. And what we do is we normalize the data to um, put it into our Aleph backend. And Aleph doesn't quite do what we want to do with all of the data. So we've got this lovely, pretty front end that zena has been um, demonstrating to you. And that's based on Solar. So we do our put our data into Aleph, take it out of Aleph, put it into Solar. It sounds complicated, but it, it works. <laughs> so yeah. I think I've got a bit of a trap topic there. No, that's great. Thank you, guys. OK, um, I've got quite another few questions. Um, OK, does participation in Suncat require a willingness to fill interlibrary, interlibrary loan requests? No, no, n not at all. It may mean that you get more interlibrary loan requests because people will, will see your collections, but know that there's no obligation. Okay. And related to that, you mentioned interlibrary loan BL codes, I assume that's British Library. That right? is, yes. And um, do we request the ILL quoting our own British Library code? Uh, I'm afraid I can't answer that question. I think that's more of a, an inter... Um, not an interlibrary lending expert, unfortunately, but we can try and find that out for, for later. Mm -hmm. um, is Suncat RDA compliant and does it show the new mark fields? Um, that's yes, in a word. Um, basically, we accept um, our records in catalogue to all formats. Uh, to all standards, I should say. So yes, we have an awful lot of RDA records in, and um, I actually, this is Natasha, by the way, I wrote a paper last year, in, which is in Alexandria, on the RDA, on the special issue of RDA, and it's how our contributing libraries are dealing with RDA and how Suncat is reacting to that. Um, so in a word, yes, but we have lots of other, other standards too. Thank you. Okay, there's two sort of related questions here. Um, one thing, where do the subject headings come from? Are they supplied by the libraries or by you or both? And then another person saying, if there was a means of browsing by subject area, that would be extremely useful. We'd welcome a comparison service um, as a means of assessing rarity of items. Uh, I'll just answer the bit about the browsing and then I'll let Tasha answer um, where the subject headings come from. Yes, I mean, there is... Um, there's a there's a browse option in Suncat, and there's a subject headings uh, browse within that. Um, and yes, you should be able to then um, assess subject strengths by if, uh, once we get the collections management facility um, up and um, up and running. Right. As far as where subject headings come from, yes, they are supplied by the libraries. Um, we if we basically take the records in 
However, they're sent to us. So a lot of records will have subject headings, a lot don't. And um, they might be LCSH, they might be MESH, they might be local, but we will take we will have them all and we will not we do not lose any information if we can possibly help it. Okay, a final question, I think. Um, I think this one will be for Tasha. Our electronic holdings are produced from A to Z data held by EBSCO. Would it be better to send the generated mark records or do you have a way of receiving the data direct from EBSCO? Um, we'd like the records sent um, as mark records to us by our, our usual FTP format, which you're so good at at Liverpool. <laughs> uh, another question, can holdings be drawn from mark 866? Yes, in a word. Um, it depends. It, basically, what we ask you to do is send us a file of your data, ex, um, how you, how you, however you send it, um, and we'll work around that. In Suncat, because of the way uh, the holdings display, we have to put all the holdings into a dollar three of an eight five two, which is very bad because it's not correct mark but it's the way that allows them to display. But quite often they're sent to us in 866s, 852-866s formats. Okay, another question. Um, oh, I've got a thank you, which is nice. And if we aren't able to send just updates, can we resend the whole of our records again? Yes. We, yes, that's fine. Basic, we have a lot of libraries who aren't able to uh, send us um, files of new changed and deleted records so they send us their entire serials collection again and what we we work out what are the new changed and deleted ones by comparing um, by comparing your new file with your old file so that's not a problem in the slightest there's one more uh -huh. um, we accept non-standard subject headings so that um, basically if a library catalogs them that way we people they can be found. There's an awful lot of very specialised libraries which, for which LCSH just aren't um, granular enough, and uh, for example, and so they have their own systems. Uh, so we accept all local subject headings as well. I'm just going to wrap up and, and say thank you very much for you all to uh, listening to us this afternoon, um, and please feel free to contact me directly or the Adina Help Desk. Um, at any time after the session and we'll also review any questions to make sure that we, uh, we get back to anyone um, if we didn't manage to answer questions. Very sorry about that. But again, thank you. Bye.